In pretty much every fitness or health advice piece, you will read or hear about the infamous 10,000 steps per day. They appear to be the holy grail of losing weight and staying healthy. Truth is, they tricked you. So this is the story of how a little piece of plastic changed the world of fitness. Let's go. Cheetah Sports. What's up everyone, welcome to another Cheetah Sports video. So you all know the recommendation of taking 10,000 steps a day. Now, did you ever wonder where this number came from? Surely evolution didn't just say, Here's an inhuman, it must take 10,000 steps to be healthy. No, of course not. Instead, it was just like many other things, money talks. Money talks. Money talks. Let's go back in time a little bit, all the way to 1964. That year, the Summer Olympics were held in Tokyo, with 93 nations and over 5,000 athletes attending. By the way, if you are interested in history, I strongly recommend reading about why the Olympic Games took place in Tokyo in 1964. So, with the Games taking place that year, a fresh fitness and sports enthusiasm spreads across the world and, as always, companies want to capitalize on it. At that time, there's a company in Japan specialized in technical aircraft instruments. It's the Yamasa Kokukeiki Company. Apologies for my pronunciation to the 22 Japanese viewer I have according to the YouTube analytics. Before, they had only manufactured special industrial instruments or complex watch movements. But now it was time to join the healthcare market. And they did by creating this, the Mampu K. The Mampu K was advertised with the slogan, healthcare with 10,000 steps a day. And conveniently, Mampu K translates to 10,000 step meter or 10,000 step counter. At the time, there was zero scientific validation or research on the 10,000 steps. It was literally just a marketing claim. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any financial or sales reports of the Mampo K, but since they are still in business today, I assume their marketing worked quite well for them. Today, we actually have science researching how many steps a day are beneficial and spoiler, it's not 10K. Also, counting steps is not even the best way of optimizing health in a convenient way, but we'll get to the better method later. The first study I found that looked somewhat useful to me dates back to the year 2000, where a group of Japanese researchers investigated the effect of taking 10,000 steps a day on patients with blood pressure issues. Unsurprising, the researchers found that the increase in step volume helped with their blood pressure. Throughout the years, scientists worked on finding reasons for why this is, how much steps influence health and pretty much everything that is connected to the topic. Then they found that it's not really the 10,000 steps that make the difference. Let me show you these diagrams from a 2023 meta-analysis, which is the latest and most prominent study I could find in this field of research. This one is quite interesting. It shows the association between steps and risk of all-cause mortality for older adults, so above the age of 60. Shout out to the 1% of my viewership that is above 60, you're the best. The y-axis displays RR for all cause mortality. RR in this case means relative risk, so the y-axis basically displays how high the risk for all cause mortality is. And the x-axis obviously displays the steps taken a day. Now here's something interesting. The more steps you take, the less of a difference it makes. Meaning if you increase your daily steps from 2000 to 3000, so by 1000 steps, this will make much more of a difference than if you increased your steps from 7,000 to 8,000. I will link the study down below, but overall it pretty much says more steps per day are good for your health. The more you walk, the better, but the biggest improvements for your health are if you aim for about 7,000 to 8,000 steps. Now, I promised you something better than counting steps earlier. So here we go. The problem with counting steps is that stride length varies from person to person, since obviously people are different heights and therefore have differences in the length of their legs. This means that 10,000 steps for one person might be much longer distance than for someone else, making it an unreliable measure of actual effort or energy expenditure. Some people naturally take shorter, quicker steps, while others cover more ground with each stride. Because of that, step counting alone doesn't always reflect how much meaningful movement or cardiovascular effort you are putting in. 
What can you do instead? Simply do 150 minutes of moderate to high intensity activity per week. A rule of thumb would be 100 minute moderate training. So something like light running, casual swimming, casual biking or even longer walks and 50 minutes high intensity training. So fast running, fast cycling or more intense workouts. This approach is a little bit more useful since 150 minutes are the same no matter your height or stride length. If you are not quite sure if something is moderate or high intensity, you can simply check how your heart rate changes. If your heart rate increases by a lot and you start breathing heavily, this normally is considered high intensity. So far so good, but I want to give you one more tip on how to use the 150 minutes in the most efficient way. If you've ever read about increasing longevity, you might have come across a few key markers that predict lifespan better than others. One of the best indicators for how long and how well you will live is your VO2 max, a crucial but often overlooked factor in fitness and longevity. For all of those who haven't heard of VO2 max before, I linked an article I wrote in my weekly newsletter down below. Make sure to check that out. So VO2 max basically measures the rate at which your body can use oxygen you breathe in. Some people refer to it as the aerobic capacity and it plays a major role in your endurance, cardiovascular health and overall longevity. The higher your VO2 max, the better your heart and lungs function, which translate into a better overall health and lower risk of chronic diseases. By the way, in the article I mentioned, there also is a training instruction on how to improve VO2 max. So all that VO2 max talk hopefully explained what to fill 150 minutes per week with, and that's VO2 max training. If you liked that video, please comment what the next video should be about, like and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Thanks.